the number one question that I get asked is, why? Why are you doing this? You don't have to. Why are you doing it? And it was funny because it was just the other day, earlier this week, I had a conversation with God, and I said, you need to help me articulate this better. I've answered it a hundred different ways, but I need you to help me visualize why I'm doing this so that I can explain it. And he gave me this vision, and I want to share it with you. So, basically, he, he gave me this vision of this house. And, well, let me, let me, let me, let me back up a little bit. So, <clears throat> I get a little choked up because I just shared this with my son earlier. But he gave me this vision. You know, I, I was I, coming into 2021. I was having the best year of, well, think about 2020. 2020 was the worst year of our lives. But coming into 2021, everything was hopeful for me. We just got named fastest growing company uh, in America. My marriage was going well. My kids were doing well. And I was incredibly hopeful for what 2021 would bring, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, on, on paper, my life seemed perfect. But all of a sudden... I started to smell smoke. And that smoke that I smelled was me realizing how unbusiness friendly California was to small business. I started to notice significantly how, how many taxes we pay and how little we get in return. And I started to smell more smoke and I started to see what was happening in our schools. I started to see how there was an attack on our children, critical race theory and sexuality being taught in our schools. And I started to see a d more smoke and smell more smoke and it was the attack on our frontline workers. And it was, it was the attack on the church. And all of a sudden, I could no longer see smoke. All I saw was fire. And I realized that the house was burning down. And as a protector, I turned to my family and I said, we got to go. We got to run. This building is on fire. I have absolutely no hope. We're in danger. We got to go. So I told my family, get ready. And I started to run for the curb. The curb was Florida. And I told my family, we got to get out of there. The house is burning. We're running for the curb. And my wife said to me, stop. She says, don't you dare. She says, I want you to turn around and I want you to see what we're leaving behind. And I said, no. I said, I don't want to. She says, you need to stop and you need to look back at what we're leaving behind. And I said, no, that's not how it works. I'm forward thinking. We're in motion. We got to get out of here. The building is on fire. And she says, no. She says, turn around and look at what we're leaving behind. I thought she was going to make the argument that California has great weather, it's a beautiful place to live. But when I turned around, I realized that I was no longer just looking at a burning building. There were 40 million people trapped inside. And as I started to look closer, I started to realize that in that 40 million people were familiar faces. I saw my mom, and I saw my dad, I saw my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, I saw my coworkers, my community, I saw my employees, but more importantly, I saw millions of other people I didn't even recognize, that I didn't even know, who were trapped inside and they weren't going to be able to make it out. And I stood there on the curb, wanting to go to Florida, <laughs> looking up at God saying, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like, you've, you've literally got to be kidding me. This is not my fight. This is not my battle. And I don't even know if you've equipped me for this. And he says, no. He says, Every struggle, every trial, every tribulation that you faced in your life, 
Every failure and every success has prepared you for exactly what I've called you to do. So I turned around <laughs> April of last year and I ran back in that house. And I've been doing everything I possibly could to save as many people as I possibly can. I'm at school boards trying to save our children. I started We Are Still Heroes because our, our frontline workers needed to be saved. But when I look at this building, I realize that there are many floors, many stories, and I cannot do it alone. This is not the job for one. I truly believe, Sarah, stand up real fast, because I used this when we were at Freedom Revival. Turn around. I truly believe that the future of our state and the future of our country rests like that scarf, I believe, whatever it is. <laughs> I believe that the future of America rests firmly on the shoulders of the church. I believe it's us who are called to save our state, us who are called to save our country, and you guys need to do your part. Because I can't do it alone, nor can anybody running do it alone, nor can anybody that's already elected do it alone. Our pastors cannot do it alone. It's going to take all of us to stand up. So my question is, who will stand? My question is, will you stand and will you tell God, send me? Will you stand up for freedom, for our state, for our country? I'm going to read this scripture. It's Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So my question to you is, who will stand for California? Who will stand for our children? No, this is a specific question. Who will stand for California? Who will stand for our children? Who will stand for our state, for our church, for our small businesses? Who will say, God send me? Who will say, God send me? Raise your hand. Now this is not very political, but I'm not a politician. I'm a prince heir to a throne. And so I'm gonna pray this out real fast and ask that God acknowledge and by the way we talk a lot about revival this is not just about revival this is the great recruitment you guys came here tonight and you didn't realize that you were being drafted god needs to build an army and the army is the church so you're not just here tonight for revival you actually got recruited and didn't even know it and now you're standing in front of the cross saying god send me well i don't know you're, you're pretty committed to this now, so I might as well pray some protection over you real fast because we're in this battle together. So, Father God, we come to you in prayer in Jesus' name, and we stand up as a body. We stand up and we say, send us. Send your church. We, com we understand, Lord, the significance of the time that we're living in. We understand our role. You have called us into battle. You say many are called, few answer. Well, this room, this group here stood up and said, we will stand in the gap for our state, for our children, our businesses, our country. And we say and declare today in Jesus' name that we stand up and we say, send me. Amen. Thank you guys so much.